up, you beautiful bastards? Hope you're having a fantastic Monday. Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show, and let's just jump into it. And the first thing we're gonna talk about is R. Kelly is back in the news today. When I first saw his name trending this morning, I was like, okay, he's either being accused of having sex and peeing on underage girls again, or we're getting new chapters of Trapped in the Closet. Turned out, nope, instead he's being accused of running a sex cult by several people and families. There's this big report this morning, a lot of people speaking out, but the main story involved this unnamed 19-year-old girl. Mother of the girl describes the first time she had her daughter meet with R. Kelly. She seems like a stage mom. She was trying to help her daughter out with her career. And to the question of why would this mother introduce her daughter to R. Kelly, who of course has been accused of some uh, less than savory thing, she said, in the back of our minds, we were thinking my daughter could be around him if I was with her. It didn't really hit home. Even with the Aaliyah situation, now that I think about it, age ain't nothing but a number. You don't think about that. You grew up with that song and you like the song. And for those that don't know, when she's referencing the Aaliyah situation, she's talking about back in 1994, R. Kelly secretly married Aaliyah when she was 15. Then back to the story, the daughter allegedly meets up with R. Kelly without her parents several times. It turns sexual. She at one point feels like he is ignoring her music. Maybe it's all about the sex, so she starts recording him. The recordings include things like Kelly saying, I want you to get in the habit of telling me what color panties you got on every day. And regarding her making songs, he says this. I'm being more interested in developing you. Songs are not an issue. You can always do a hit song. You can always do a great song. That's good. This girl then enrolls in college. Her roommate says that she still has a relationship with R. Kelly. And it escalates. Reportedly, she began losing weight. She cropped her long hair short, permed what was left, and dyed it blonde. And allegedly, she did this because that's how Kelly liked her hair to look. She eventually then stopped showing up to classes. She left mid-semester. When she dropped out, she was 21. There have been multiple wellness checks to see if she's okay. Reportedly, she told officers she was fine and did not want to be bothered with her parents because her father was threatening people. And ultimately, the authorities told the parents that there wasn't evidence that she was being held against her will. And in the eyes of the law, she's an adult, saying there's nothing they can do. But many point to this not being an isolated story. According to Kelly's former assistant, Shelly Mack, and two women who have previously had relationships with Kelly, Kitty Jones and Asante McGee, R. Kelly controlled multiple women that were living with him. All of them allege that there were five women staying with him. A 31-year-old den mother who trained newcomers on how Kelly likes to be pleasured sexually. They say she's been best friends since high school with the girl in the videotape for which Kelly was tried in 2008. The sources say she recently parted ways with Kelly. A 25-year-old woman who has been part of Kelly's scene for seven years. A recent arrival, a 19-year-old model has been photographed in public with Kelly and named on music gossip websites. The Atlanta songwriter we've been talking about, she's now 26. And an 18-year-old singer from Polk County, Florida. Max saying the Florida singer is Kelly's favorite, his number one girl. They say he makes them call him daddy and he calls them babies. Max said the women in Kelly's entourage initially think this is our Kelly. I'm going to live a lavish lifestyle. But it's not that way, saying no, you have to ask for food. You have to ask to use the bathroom. Our Kelly is a master at mind control. He is a puppet master. They said Kelly confiscated skates these girls' phones, then gives them a new one, only giving them permission to call him or someone he has approved. There are even allegations that he punishes women if they do things like interact with a man he doesn't like. Mac and Jones saying, he punishes them physically and verbally. Jones claiming that R. Kelly held her against a tree and slapped her outside of a Subway sandwich shop in 2013. This because she had been too friendly with the male cashier there. On the other side, McGee said she never saw Kelly hit anybody, but also said he was running a cult and manipulated her emotionally and sexually. They allege that to punish one of the girls, he would not let one of them leave the tour bus for three days? And to all of this, R. Kelly's lawyer responded, saying, we can only wonder why folks would persist in defaming a great artist who loves his fans, works 24 seven, and takes care of all the people in his life. He works hard to become the best person and artist he can be. It is interesting that stories and tales debunked many years ago turn up when his goal is to stop the violence, put down the guns, and embrace peace and love. I suppose that is the price of fame. Like all of us, Mr. Kelly deserves a personal life. Please respect that. But also the argument against Kelly's lawyer is it's not just the acquittal we're talking about here. That trial, like R. Kelly's lawyer, excluded the claims of many underage girls that said that R. Kelly abused his position and had sex with them. Reportedly, there were over a dozen civil lawsuits against R. Kelly that he settled out of court for a cash payment. Also, I'll never really be able to understand how he was found not guilty. Guy on a sex tape looks like him. The woman he's having sex with and urinating on looks like his goddaughter. The room they're having sex in appears to look exactly like one of R. Kelly's rooms. Tons of people testify that is the goddaughter. I'm talking 14 witnesses identified her. Carrie Kelly, R. Kelly's brother even said that Kelly offered him $50,000 to say it wasn't him on the tape. This is a settled case, and this is now the only thing that ties this together. Reportedly on those tapes, whoever was on it, definitely not R. Kelly, orders the girl in that tape to call him daddy. But that's also a different situation. What we're talking about here are grown women. If you have evidence of things like the false imprisonment on that bus, if you have evidence of the, the assault, you a woman getting hit, you have something, but without that, you just have allegations and a story that makes someone sound very manipulative. Someone who, no matter how much my daughter wanted to be famous, 
famous I would not introduce to. I'm a big believer and if there is smoke, there is fire, and it looks like there's a fire. My goal here isn't to full out bash the parents or the mom for arranging this. In their defense, R. Kelly still having a career, being acquitted in that case, that to you that may make seem like everything's on the up and up. I mean, Lady Gaga, of all people, recorded a duet with him in 2013. He was on Jimmy Fallon last December. But with all of that said, I do want to pass the question off to you. What are your thoughts from this whole situation? Do you think these accusations are true, yes or no? What's your full takeaway here? I'd love to know in those comments down below. But from that, I want to share some stuff I love today and today in awesome. And the first bit of awesome is we got a behind the scenes video for Star Wars The Last Jedi. I mean, I'm already excited, but just getting this little breadcrumb, I cannot wait until December 15th. Then we got a trailer for A Wrinkle in Time. Sad news, it's not coming out until March 2018. Then we got a new trailer for Blade Runner 2049. And the more I see of this movie, the more excited I am. I, I am always wary of any sequel that comes many years after. But as of right now, this is shaping up to look fantastic. Then, if you are a Kingdom Hearts fan, we got a trailer for Kingdom Hearts 3. And in the trailer, they showcase Toy Story World. And then I decided to share this video from Thrillist for you foodies out there. They put out this whole video about pork rolls in New Jersey. They just keep showing me food I didn't even know I wanted. And the last bit of awesome is Game of Thrones is back. HBO released a teaser for episode two, but oh my god, episode one. It was a setup episode. The involvement of Ed Sheeran was weird to me. That part felt a little bit more like a web exclusive side story rather than a part of a, an actual episode. But ultimately, the first and last scenes, they just, they made it for me. And if you want to see the full versions of everything, I just shared the secret link of the day, anything at all. Links, as always, are in the description down below. And then let's talk about China in the news again. There's been a lot of China censorship news the past week, targeting homosexuals, targeting anyone speaking ill of the state. And today, China kept marching on when they took aim at Christopher Robin's best friend, Winnie the Pooh. Oh, bother, you might be saying. Yes, oh, bother, indeed. Reportedly, the Chinese name for Winnie the Pooh and even images of Winnie the Pooh, they are now being blocked on social media websites in China. This because they've been comparing Winnie the Pooh to China's president. You can kind of see the similarity here. You can see it more here. And, oh, wow, that's actually perfect. The main point being, when users were on China's version of Twitter, Weibo, and they attempted to post Winnie the Pooh's name, it would say, content is illegal. And in response to this, and it really shouldn't be a shock to anyone that understands how the internet works, this just solidifies that people are going to compare the president of China to Winnie the Pooh always. Because of this news on WeChat, the mentions of Winnie the Pooh went from pretty much zero to three million. And for at least the next year, whenever we talk about the president of China, boom, picture Winnie the Pooh. Right now, on screen, I have two pictures up. One is Winnie the Pooh, and the other is the president of China. I bet you can't even tell the difference between the two. But main point, good luck on that whole censorship thing, China. And then in something that I was going to include in Today in Awesome, but it's actually a different kind of story, Doctor Who announced that after five decades with the 13th Doctor, there will finally be a female Doctor. For those that don't watch, Doctor Who is about a Time Lord. Every so often this character has to regenerate, which allows a whole new actor to be cast as that person. And until now, it's always been a man, but now with Jodie Whittaker, we have our first female Doctor. And as you'd expect with this kind of change up, there was a lot of excitement and a lot of hate. Some of the people excited saying, I'll be able to buy my five-year-old niece Doctor Who merchandise where the woman is at the front, in charge, not a companion, the doctor, fab. I love the thought of little girls around the world running around school playgrounds with a Sonic pretending to be the 13th Doctor. Then you also had those that were angry and disappointed. One tweeting, Doctor Who died today. He didn't die nobly, as you might expect. He was murdered by political correctness, hashtag not my doctor. Casting a female has just written off Doctor Who, welcome to the end. And for some, they were happy about the change, but they said it wasn't enough. Feminist Frequency tweeting out that they were thrilled about this change. But tweeting, it needs to be said that Doctor Who is still an overwhelmingly white show, and that issues of representation do not exist in isolation from each other. Adding, it's not as if you fix the woman problem, then the race problem, then the queer trans problem, etc. It all has to happen in tandem. Treating these as separate issues works to create a vision of progress that perpetuates the very imbalances we're struggling against. To which many argue that the main companion last year was a black lesbian. Adding that change does happen in bite-sized pieces, and that each individual doesn't have to represent every bit of change. For there to be valid progress, the next main character doesn't need to be a trans woman of color, who's a little person who only has one leg. And personally, my takeaway from all of this is cool. I think a lot of people that are angry or annoyed by this change are looking at it through the lens of this is an apples to apples comparison of the new Ghostbusters. We're changing genders just because we can't. I don't want to be that guy and I know the level that my wife finds me attractive is going to plummet after me arguing this point. But in the Doctor Who universe, it is canon that a Time Lord can be a man or a woman after regeneration. When Matt Smith was a doctor, when talking about another Time Lord, he noted that when another Time Lord regenerated and was a woman, she was a bad girl. And the Time Lord in question had different sexes at different times. And when we got Matt Smith after 
my doctor. Hashtag my doctor, David Tennant. After that regeneration, Matt Smith even like pats down there to make sure he's still got one. You also had the master becoming the mistress, Missy. And ultimately for me with Doctor Who, it's gonna come down to the same two things it always has. The skill of the person and the role of the doctor and the writer. Based off of this reveal trailer, there's nothing that makes me think that political correctness has killed a show. It just looks like change for a show that at its core has been all about change. And for me, it just felt like people were looking for a problem here. People have been asking for this for a long time, as well as a ginger doctor. It offers an interesting twist, new story arcs. I understand where the argument is coming from for other franchises where it might be just a pure marketing play, but this one here, it just works and it fits. Not everything has to fit your narrative. And I say that to the people that hate that the doctor's a woman, to, to the feminist frequencies of the world, or just to people in general. And actually, I think that's a solid note to end today's show on, but of course, I do want to pass the question off to you. What is your takeaway? Will it be this last story, the first one, anything in between? Let me know what you think in those comments down below. And remember, if you liked this video, you like what I try and do on this channel, hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And if you missed and want to catch up on the last Philip DeFranco show, you can click or tap right there to watch that. Or if you want to see today's brand new behind the scenes vlog, click or tap right there to watch that. But that said, of course, as always, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces and I'll see you tomorrow.